A person's uh, character is determined by what's in their heart and how they choose uh, voluntarily to interact with others. My special guest today is Lawrence Reed. He likes to go by Larry Reed. He is the President Emeritus of the Foundation for Economic Education, where he served as the head knocker there for 10 years. He's an author, economist, a great teacher, and he's got a new book out called, and it's appropriate for the holiday season, Was Jesus a Socialist? Why this question is being asked again, and why the answer is almost always wrong. So uh, let's uh, start with the uh, story of the rich man uh, admonished to sell possessions and give the uh, resources to the poor. Is, is, isn't that socialistic? Yeah, yeah this story is a, a great one that, that illustrates that what was on Jesus's mind was not the size of your bank account, but rather what was really in your heart. And uh, the story you're referring to involves a rich ruler. Uh, there, This is recorded in two of the four Gospels, and it's the second one, I think, in Mark, perhaps, where it's revealed that this rich man is also a ruler. So he was a politician of some sort, notorious in that day for being uh, uh, a greedy and uh, eager to get as much of other people's money as they could get. In any event, uh, this man approaches Jesus and says, uh, Master, I, I want to uh, uh, join your cause and be part of the inner circle here. How do I do that? How do I get salvation and, and uh, similar things? And Jesus says to him, as a kind of test, I'm sure, sell everything you have and follow me. Well, no doubt Jesus knew what was in the man's heart ahead of time. And he fully expected that the man would say no. And that's exactly what he did. He said, no, no, I can't do that. No, you're not so important, Jesus, that I would do that. Uh, salvation is not so important to me that I would give up my earthly possessions, even though I can't take them with me anyway. Uh, so Jesus then turns to someone else who's present and says, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. Socialists look at that and they say, ah, see, he's, he doesn't like wealthy people. But what Jesus is saying there is that with wealth comes temptations. He would say the same thing about power, which is what socialists, of course, are always trying to accumulate and concentrate. He's saying, uh, handle your wealth properly. Keep your priorities in order. Don't love your wealth. Manage it. Produce more of it for the good of all. But don't, uh, don't worship wealth. That takes your eyes off of what you should be worshiping, which is God. Uh, that's what Jesus is saying. It's not anti-rich. He's just saying, uh, keep your priorities in order. Don't let the wealth get to you. Yeah, wealth, wealth can corrupt like power and uh, even adversity in life can uh, be uh, in its own way uh, corrupting yes. uh, the human condition. Um, and uh, it's an important point you make there that a lot of people got rich in those times, not by uh, setting up a software firm or opening up a franchise for McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, they got it by getting a special dispensation from the government where they could forcibly uh, squeeze uh, resources out of the people. That's right. And uh, I know of nothing in any of Jesus's words in the New Testament that would suggest he would be in any way friendly to crony capitalism, to the use of government to get something at other people's expense. This was a man who believed profoundly in, in the gift of free will, of personal choice, of voluntarism. He believed that uh, a, a person's uh, character is determined by what's in their heart and how they choose uh, voluntarily to interact with others, not by what they say or by what we might compel them to do, but rather what's in their heart. That is so central to the message of Jesus Christ.